through the carbonate, that's how I got free. Jump it back off because there's no stopping me. Postmodern player, sample tastic, flows it frastic. I get drastic. Hey, watch the plastic. Yo, I name check and leave you drastic. This is Spencer with the MacGuffin, and I'm joined today by the director, Jacob Vaughn, and the star, or one of the stars, Gillian Jacobs of Milo, a film which is premiering, premiered, premiered. at South by Southwest last this year. night. Um, Essentially, it's about a man with a demon inside his stomach, which is, is, I guess, straightforward. I don't know. For whatever reason, I had trouble with it. But when I was describing it to my friends after having seen it, I was uh, comparing it to a combo of dinosaurs with Teen Wolf. Dinosaurs. The TV show. Oh, I love the TV show. Yeah, exactly. I'm a right. baby. Gotta right. love me. Yeah. The eyes. Yeah, the yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. And, then, and Teen Wolf is a great analogy. You know, yeah. the transfer. We actually used some of the soundtrack of Teen Wolf as temp music. Oh, really? the, it's called it's called the transformation. That cue. That's that, awesome. Dun, 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 dun. We used that every time Milo was coming out, just to get a feel for like, is this the kind of you know? We want to give permission. We want to give the audience permission to laugh, you know. So we sure, can use yeah. that as temp before we had the composer. Yeah. So that for, for me, that was what was sort of like it distilled into a simple explanation <laughs> of what it was. I don't know if that makes sense to anyone else, but that's what I got from it. That's awesome. Uh, Anything like dinosaur is cool by me. I know it's pretty awesome. I love that TV show. I yeah. say bring it back. You know, why can't it come back? I think it was really expensive. That was like Didn't 1996. Steven Spielberg produce that? Or something? Probably. Yeah. I mean, but. This is That's like familiar, 1996. Yeah. Like right. nowadays, it. it's probably like they do CGI dinosaurs. Oh, that's right, the whole right. point is it's not yeah. CGI, yeah. and the puppet in Milo is not CGI. It's that's a right. which is very impre- that's very awesome. Like that, I got to give that, you credit for that. That seems you. like that'd be incredibly challenging to do. Well, that so. that was the goal from the very beginning. Was like I wanted a I wanted something real that we could photograph that the actors could interact with and improv with and react off of each other. Yeah, that's sort of one of the questions. I guess you can speak to this, and you can sort of speak to the tra- just directing that is. I mean, obviously, I'm not an actor. I mean, I don't think I've acted since, like, I was an eighth grade play or something like that. But what was sort of the most challenging thing for you? I mean, I, I, I would think comedy would be difficult, getting the timing right. I could see how drama could be difficult, you know, trying to make it believable. Or acting with a, uh, a puppet seems like that could be very challenging as well. So. Well, I asked a lot of these guys. You yeah. know, I had an incredible cast. I mean, the comedy is, like, you know, they... <laughs> Ken and Gillian and Peter and these guys, I mean, their their comedy chops are amazing. And so I really just sort of put that on their plate. I, I mean, I wrote, I had a script that I hoped was funny and I hoped I had some good lines, but I always had the idea that, that you know, I, I like it when actors kind of start with the lines and then and go off of them and, like, mm. you know, have other things and improv a little bit. So I thought we'd be safe in the comedy area because, you know, Ken is so funny, Gillian's so funny, and, and the situation is ridiculous. So I thought that would be funny. But, yeah, working with the puppet was, you know, it was tricky because we had puppeteers, and it's like, what angles can we get from him, and how can we do this? And, we, we you know, I'm, I'm, I come from an editing background, so I kind of knew what shots I wanted to get. And so I just, I, I went with that. And fighting a puppet, challenging? Fighting a puppet, challenging. <laughs> Getting punched by a puppet, interesting. Um, domestic abuse. Domestic abuse at the hands of a puppet. Yeah, I guess that would be domestic abuse. Right. Well. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. Hmm. But, you know, I will <laughs> say, as an actor, I think we would, I think most actors would always choose to be interacting with a real thing rather than a CGI. So I'd much rather get punched by a real puppet than pretend to get punched by a tennis you know, ball a nothing yeah so worked for me and in terms of like you mentioned this I think before we start recording the premise is sort of very outlandish I don't know what you want to describe it as Was I think it? it's completely normal I don't <laughs> okay. it, maybe, maybe it's just me and my like regular bowel movements or whatever but uh what was the process? You need like? to eat some more kale. I, I, I can't eat kale. Like I, spinach, it'll rip spinach, right through you. Spinach, spinach, maybe, but not kale. That's too much. You need some rough greens. Mm-hmm. Uh, A Vitamix. What is was the process like in terms of sort of keeping it in that realm of like this is still funny and entertaining, but it's not just like absolutely bananas crazy. Well, I did. I never wanted to. I never wanted it to be played like wacky. I didn't want the actors or the characters to be like winking at the audience or you know t- do, saying tongue in cheek lines or you know I didn't want them to be playing in a comedy I wanted them to be straight um, and taking it very seriously and, and my reference to that was I, I mean I love the movie you know Shaun of the Dead and I thought mm-hmm. one thing that they nailed so 
perfectly was the tone. It's a zombie movie, and but these people, they, they, they take it seriously. And when his parents, you know, become zombies, and, and that's so sad. And he has to, I think he has to kill his mother or something. Like, yes, he oh does. Oh, my God. That's like, yeah, you do. really feel for him. So that's what I wanted. I wanted, you know, uh, I wanted, you know, I want the audience to feel for Duncan and really sympathize with him, you know, and like him and see that he's in this crazy situation. And what would you do if you were in this situation? So I, I don't know. I mean, it's a balancing act for sure to maintain that, you know, and not have it be like over the top wacky comedy. Well, I sort of think, I mean, obviously your character has some funny stuff that she does, but she's kind of one of the more straight oh, yeah. uh, men in the film. Like you, you kind of keep it even keel, so to speak. Was that sort of I don't. I mean, obviously, we've done a lot of different roles, but was that sort of challenging because there's so much craziness going around <laughs> you, and because you're so used to doing comedy? Well, um, before I did comedy, I used to do a lot of not comedy, so um, it was kind of more of a return to what I used to do. I was in this really weird movie called The Box with Richard Kel- that Richard Kelly directed. Uh, yes, I remember that movie. <laughs> People have very strong responses I, to that I, movie. Look, he's a very talented guy. He's a very talented guy. I feel like there's some people who need like stronger producers to keep them in check. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying on that. I didn't say it. Uh, anyway, <laughs> blog post to follow. Uh, with well, further thoughts. We will flame me. No worries about that. I'm sure. Like, but this is not the first time I've said as much about Richard. Kahn, or, so. Uh, well, anyway, I was I, I I I think I've done things in the past. Yeah. I did an episode of Fringe where it's yes. it could be very ridiculous, but you have to play it very seriously. You know, or I kidnapped a child and forced him to write classical piano music. Forced him? Yes, I held him hostage in a mysterious lair. Wow, well, that was a great episode. Yeah, I to remember, yeah. and then. Um, I grabbed an apple through a safe. So, um, but I think the key to all these sorts of things is to play it very straight. And after having done community for the last four years, it's kind of fun to, to be a straight man, you know. And so I, I, it's, I, that's fine by me. I don't have a problem with, you know, being the serious one. And I also thought it was a really kind of sweet relationship at the center of it. And you have to like them as a married couple and want them, you know, to be happy together, to care really about, what Duncan is going through in the film. Um, so it was fine by me. <laughs> I hope I get to do something really silly with Ken in the future. But this one, I was very happy to be the like sweet, supportive wife. Hopefully not with any ass-related stuff. I, I think could... it'd be kind of fun yeah, <laughs> to do some ass stuff with Ken. That was sure don't don't rule it out. Don't rule it out. What was it like working with the Duplass brothers? Because I, I got to be say, like, there's a lot of things that interest, interest me in this movie. Talented cast, the plot sounded very interesting. But when I saw sort of like the Duplass brothers connection, mm-hmm. I was like, okay, this is this is really kicking into a new gear for me. Because after last year, they they kind of killed it last year between the acting and the directing and yeah. Whatnot. What was it like working with them on this project? Well, it's it's great. I mean, I, I went to school with uh, with with JJ Class, and, oh, okay. and we went to film school together here in Austin at mm. UT. And uh, and then a little bit later, I met Mark, and I've you know been friends with them for a very long time, and and have watched them grow. And then just like a few years ago, um, they asked me to to come and, and work as an additional editor on Cyrus, and then Jeff who lives oh, at home, nice. and so it. it was just really great to reconnect with them. You know, I. I'd known them, but they were very busy, so we didn't hang out that much. And then when I got to work on their movies, I was like, oh, "Hey, what's going on?" You know, and 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 it was it was a lot of fun. And it was during Cyrus that I gave uh, Mark uh, the script I was working on, called Milo, and I and I gave it to him, and he really liked it. And uh, I had originally asked him to act in it. I was like, "Would you, you know, consider acting in this?" Because he was doing a lot of that. And he said, well, you know, I'm sort of, I'm not sure what direction I'm going acting wise, but we really want to help you make it. So we would love to be our, the executive producers of it. And I was like, great. And then, you know, then we did Jeff Who Lives at Home and then I did Black Rock. And it, so like I had to, I had to wait and I was, I wanted to be patient. I didn't want to be a, a jerk about it or bug them or, yeah. so I just sort of like, well, now's not the time I'm doing, you know, I got to do this thing for work and do this thing for work. And then I, so I used that time to rewrite the script and try to make it better because I knew it needed work. 
Um, so working with them, you know, Mark has is Mark and Jay are both really good with story. Mark is really great with story on the front end, and Jay. I mean, if I had to be specific about it, and Jay is really good with story on the back end. Um, Mark's the mouth, and Jay's the butt. Exactly. Exactly. And it's so the human to bring it back, yeah, bring it back to Milo. To bring it back to Milo, yeah. And 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 so Jay is they're both good with story and they complement each other so well. And so in post, Jay was like really helpful in saying, okay, you know, this, this, you know, with music we really have to like have fun. That was the, the biggest note he gave, and I was like, yeah, obviously. And I hadn't realized that. And so he was like, make, we gotta make it fun, fun, fun. And music, he knew music was gonna be a big part of this movie, and it was. Yeah. And, and then we, he recommended Ted Mazur, the composer. Hmm. And um, Ted's done a lot of stuff, but it's like nothing really has broken out, so he's kind of an undiscovered gem. And he's incredible. He's absolutely incredible. He knocked it out of the park. He makes, I think, Along with, you know, Ken sort of making this a believable premise, Ted sort of wraps it all together and makes it sound big and feel big and feel really fun. So, What was it like working with the cast? I mean, you can speak to that in that regard. I mean, I would imagine you all or a lot of you probably know each other already. No. I didn't no. know no. anyone. Oh, okay. no. What was it like <laughs> developing that chemistry? I, I didn't know any of the other actors. I don't think I'd worked with any of them before this wow. film. So Ken, obviously, is somebody that I'd wanted to work with. Um, and definitely when you when you get sent a script and you see his name attached to it, that piques your interest and definitely, like, you're like, definitely going to read this one. And then for me, it was just a blast. And Ken has said the same thing in other interviews of, like, every day, more so for him, but also for me getting to work with Kamail and Mary Kay and all these other people, it was just amazing actor, actor, after yeah. amazing actor, none of whom I'd ever met before. Wow. And um, it was just really fun. And it, and there was just a great sense of play on set, you know. And, and not that the film is improvised by any stretch of imagination, but it's like you just see actors having fun with each other. And I think that reads on screen with Absolutely. the performances. Yeah. No, and I, and I encourage them to, like, you know, go a little bit beyond the script or go a lot beyond the script and, and like... <laughs> Ad lib and bring some. I mean, I I think that they, you know, a good actor can take what I've written and and put it in their own words and make it much more believable. So, but you know, but then they would always say, well, but I like the way it's written, and I'd be like, well, you know, do it how you want, you know. And and so there was like a nice blend of of that. I got lucky with the cast. The cast is amazing. I mean, it's 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 definitely a fun film, and it's, it's, it's really interesting that you would decide to go the, the route of, like, a puppet film right out the gate. I mean, like, yeah. what was the sort of philosophy? I mean, you have the script, I guess, that's one reason. Well, I, it seems like you might want to do it something easier, you know, just like, I don't know, you, you dealt with the, the Duplass Brothers and stuff. I mean, Jeff Who Lives at Home, one of my favorite films of last year, but, yeah. like, for the most part, it's a very straightforward film. There's no outland. Oh, no, no, no. Yeah, I mean, this is, I mean, it's my, it, it, you know, yeah, it's 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 Duplass in that it was it was sort of brought to the world through their energy, but it's very different aesthetic. No, no, right? I, I, of course. I don't yeah. mean to compare in that regard. I'm sure. just saying, like, was there any sort of sense of like maybe I should just do like a small <laughs> comedy that doesn't involve right. like, having like puppet tears on yeah. set? With yeah, I don't know why. You gotta sing your heart song. You this is your heart song. This is got yeah, yeah. You do have to sing your heart song. And uh, <laughs> that is, I mean, listen, I, I, if you had told me like five years ago that in a year you're going to have this idea about a butt monster, I would have said, you're crazy. I did not ask, I didn't really, I didn't see myself as a genre director. I did not see myself as um, doing any kind of horror-related genre at all. I literally, and, and, and this is sort of part of what I believe, is that um, I you know, in a moment of inspiration, the idea came out of the ether and kind of downloaded in. And I don't know where that stuff comes from. I just, it just happened and it made me laugh and I want to laugh. That's one thing that I know that I want to do most of the time is laugh. So it made me laugh. I started thinking about it. I was like, this is crazy. Nobody's going to, nobody's going to let me make this movie. <laughs> and I was like, but fuck it. I'll just do it anyway. I'll just write it at least. Yeah. And I could do anything. I could just make it any, I could do anything I wanted. Well, you, I think you took the wrong approach with that. Uh. Um, listen, listen <laughs> give, me, give me a chance. Give me a chance. 
Hollywood is all about selling name brand products, right? Uh -huh. They'll make anything into a movie. So I'm thinking you should have sold it as Pepto Bismol the movie. <laughs> oh, right. Probably get like a two hundred million dollar budget. That we way. have to have a captive audience. We either have to come from a book, a comic book, or some That's other or a product. Yeah. Or a take product. Anything. Yeah. A like ride. A ride. Yeah. yeah. A board game. Um, That's true. I'm, sh I'm shipping. Or, uh, I'm shopping a Connect Four movie right now in case you want to. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Sorry, nice. Nice. It's really, yeah. Three in a row. Go for one more. That's the yeah. tagline. <laughs> what was the most challenging part for you in making this, though? I mean, was it the puppet or both of you? I mean, like... uh, the most challenging part. I mean, it's it's all very hard. <laughs> it really is equally all... hard. It, I mean, look, you know, getting all the shots that you want to get mm. in one day's time mm -hmm. is very difficult, and you're constantly having to push up against the budget and the budget's saying no actually you can't have that shot all right so what do i what can i have instead you know well you can't have anything instead and so it's just like ah it's constantly a struggle so what can i do with the resources that i've got i mean we just are constantly running up you know running out of resources and um but you know it's weird you never know what's good and what's bad ultimately you think Oh, I didn't get this thing in this scene, and that's bad, and that's horrible, and I'm, uh, this scene is going to suck because I don't have this thing now. But what actually is the case is that the scene grows organically, and what you get is probably what you... I don't know. I mean, I just think that, that you, you get what you get, and you try to make the best of, out of it in post. And that's what I did, and I don't... I, I mean, I never know what's good and what's bad. It turns out what I thought was bad actually turns out to be fine. Totally fine. Well, I mean, you're sort of making an interesting point. And I, I think the film... Sort of making an interesting point. A very interesting you point. Revise you revise and make extend. You a very, very Thank interesting Thank point. Thank you. Thank uh, you. It's, it's, I mean, the film is a lot of fun. And I, as I said, I, I was a little skeptical going to it, but I, ver I very much sure. enjoyed it. I mean, you look at the log line, it's like, I don't know. Well, I, just, I didn't even like, understand. I was like, do I not know how to read? Like, am I, like, <laughs> That's so confusing to you. I, butt I, monster, I, butt monster. That, Everybody gets I'm, it, butt was, monster. Was that actually in the synopsis? Was butt monster in the synopsis? No, it was, I think okay, the synopsis. The, the, the the ass demon, as, yeah. let's not mince words. A demon well, baby know, in like, his colon. Demon baby well, that, in his like, colon. When you, when you actually see like the colon T thing, like that's more of what I was actually imagining. If you told me there's like an actual puppet like shit day one i'd be there to yeah. get in hand like <laughs> yeah. okay but like, well tell all your readers there's a puppet let's really emphasize yeah, the puppet the dinosaur, we, we, dinosaur. dinosaur puppet puppet animatronic eyes Not cute CG. no cg blinky, blinky, no cg cute, cute. Yeah. adorable gizmo stripe uh, Giz oh god Ooh. you're on the right track there. yeah but the question is sort of like what is the sort of perception getting this out to people because you know like me it might be very much appreciated, but it might be something that people aren't necessarily going to just look at and be like, the poster's cool, but like they might not just look at the poster and be like, I gotta see that movie. And for you, I guess yeah. the, the sort of spin on that is, I mean, I'm sure you have any number of projects coming at you at a time. What is sort of your perception in picking this project that might not be the easiest project to market? Like, I mean, I, I don't know if they offered you Battleship 2 or something, <laughs> but like that seems like that would be one that would be marketed with 200 million dollar budget and this is not Well to get me that. even if it might not be the easiest thing to market it's so distinctive that it's yes. carved out its own place in the cinematic landscape which I think is already an accomplishment because I feel like a lot of scripts that I read feel very much the same like they're totally. to a large degree interchangeable so this if nothing else there's nothing else like it you know so it's like to me as an actor that really stood out reading it and then I think to the audience you know I think that hopefully the good press coming out of South by will, you know, encourage people to go see it and give it a chance. And, you know, hopefully maybe you, you like some of the actors that are in the movie and you want to see it because they're in it. But um, I really do feel like it's this great mixture of touching, funny, and horror. So, you know, if, if you like movies that walk the line, like Shaun of the Dead, like you mentioned, this this is for you. You should go see it. Mm -hmm. uh, on that note, what is the... Uh, word on the release of it? Is there a place, like a website people can follow to keep up to date on it? You know, I mean, things are happening. I don't know. Conversations are being had. We're seeing, I mean, obviously, I would love it if Milo got, came out into the world. Sure. And, uh, um, and, and, yeah, re yeah breached, uh, crowned into existence. I, I really, you know, listen, I hope, I hope it, I hope that happens. I, I am, it's, it's beyond my control. I, 
things are happening, if it happens, that's great. And I just really, I had a fantastic premiere last night. I have another screen tonight and one on Thursday, and I'm just having a ball. Hype your Twitter. Hype your Twitter. Well, that's yes, just it. I was yes. going to say, where, what do you guys have coming out, and where can people follow what you guys have Oh, about? Twitter. Okay, well, my Twitter is at Jacob J. Vaughn, and uh, V-A-U-G-H-A-N. And... Uh, the uh, and 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 it's you know listen it's there's a lot of th- there's a lot of tweets going out right now which is really exciting. But um, as soon as there is news, it'll be on his Twitter feed. Yes, I will let you know absolutely. Follow him, Jacob J Vaughn J A C O B J V A U G H A N. That was quick. And you'll put that up on the screen, oh, yeah. right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, great. Uh, I'm at Gillian Jacobs, and uh, let's see what's going on. Fourth season of Community is currently airing Thursday nights at 8 p.m. on NBC. Uh, I'm in a movie, Burt Wonderstone, which also yes, premiered at South by Southwest. Right. Yep. Uh, I am in a movie called Walk of Shame that I just shot with Elizabeth Banks and James Marsden. I just did a web series called Tiny Commando with Ed Helms and Zach Levi. I'm in a short film, which is also airing at South by Th- Southwest called It's It's Not You, It's Me. I'm supposed to interview the director about tomorrow. Really? Yeah. Matt Spicer? Yeah. Yep. That's another one involving blood and me. Um... <laughs> Um, and what else am I doing? Is that it? That's it? Uh, that sounds you good, me. right? I don't know. That's all? That's good. Yeah, that's, that's it? That's, 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 that's really, pretty good. That doesn't like very much. Yeah. Well, uh, Gillian, Jacob, thank you so much. Thank and, you. Uh, check out Thanks. more reviews on MacGuffinPodcast.com. Thank you. Thanks. Magneto can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. Magneto can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. Even Zod can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. Don't even try to buy the sound style. Mr. Spock can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. The Wrath of Khan can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. The Borg can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. Because I've got space game and it feels all right.